it's filled with gratitude. The Bible says, give thanks always. Give thanks in everything. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit is thankful to God. But this is only happen, happening when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the last thing that will happen, verse 21, submitting to one another in fear, in the fear of God. Beloved, the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be submitted. So these are the three things that will happen when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one, you have praise and worship in your heart. You don't, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Even when you have no, no money in your pocket, you are praising the Lord for salvation. You are praising the Lord for a roof over your head. You are praising the Lord for his love for you, even when you were not lovable. Some people are not lovable, I promise you. Even ourselves, it is hard for us to, to love a certain type of people. We are very choosy to love. That's why the Bible says you must have agape love. A love that has no interest. A love that seeks nothing in return. I love you just because you are a child of God. But it is hard to love some people. But God, he loved us when we were unlovable. When we were sinning against him. At the cross of Calvary, Jesus did not say forgive them when they asked for forgiveness. No, he said forgive them. They didn't say sorry. No. They were busy killing him. They were busy piercing him. He was busy bleeding. He says, I forgive you. This is how much God loves us. Hallelujah. So what do we give to this God? Submission. Amen. We give him submission. And because of that, we are filled with gratitude. We are filled with praise and worship. And we are submitted. Someone who is not filled with the Holy Spirit, they will not be submitted. My sister, if you have trouble submitting to your husband for any reason, oh, he doesn't take care of himself. Oh, he's not clean. Oh, he doesn't pray. Oh, uh, he doesn't know. In terms of money, you are an accountant. My sister, you are a qualified accountant. You are a chartered accountant. But your husband is telling you how we're going to manage money in the house. And you can see that mm -mm, he's making mistakes. But the Bible says you must submit. Even in, in that area. Because it says submit in everything. Are you going to submit? Hallelujah. Submit. But if you know that, mm -mm, yeah, there is a mistake. But his final, his word is the final authority. Say, Lord, I leave it in your hands. <laughs> because you can know. You are smart. You are a smart somebody. You are telling him this is what you must do. He says, no, we will do it this way. Lord, I leave it in your hand. Don't oppose him. Pray for him. Hallelujah. So how do you submit even when it is hard to submit? You ask for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to be submitted to this man. Today it is very hard for women to submit to men. Because we are fighting for emancipation out there. We are fighting for uh, equality. We are fighting for equal pay. All these things, I support them. Emancipation of the women. I support emancipation of the women. I have three girls. I have a, I'm a father to three girls. I want them to go to work and to get the same pay that their male counterparts are earning. Amen? I don't want them to be abused in the world. I want their rights to be protected. I, su I support these things, but outside, not in your house. In your house, there is a boss. In your house, there is a head. There is a leader. Where the Bible says the man is the, 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 the head, the, in French, they say he is the chef. He's the boss. The husband is the head of the wife. And read carefully. It doesn't say the husband is the head of the house. Mm -mm. He's the head of the wife. And I explain what it means to be the head of the wife. It means the head of the body. Without the, the head, the body is nothing. Amen. So the Holy Spirit will enable your submission. If you have trouble submitting, respecting, honoring, obeying your husband. Because in some scriptures it says, obey your husband. That term, mm, today we don't like it. In today's world, mm -mm, we don't like it. Obey your husband. After speaking everything I said here concerning submission, 
of the bride to her groom, of the wife to the husband. I said that I was speaking about your relationship with Christ. I was speaking about the church and Christ. Even if this advice I've given can apply to a couple. However, on Wednesday, I finished by saying I'm speaking about every Christian's relationship with God. You, my brother, and you, my sister. Why? Because the Bible says that the church is the bride of Christ. It means you, you are the bride of Christ. Whether you are a man or a woman, you are the bride of Christ. And as the bride of Christ, we need to be submitted to Christ in everything. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. This series of the perfect bride is about Christ and the church. It's about you, my brother. It's about you, my sister, and your relationship with Christ. For you to be the bride of Christ, you need to be married to Christ. You can't be a bride if you are not married to Christ. So ask yourself, am I really committed to Christ? Or am I in a relationship, what we call in English, a common law relationship? Or a common law marriage? Who knows what a common law marriage is? A common law marriage is what we call in English Yagatovand. And in French, we call it fat and set. What is it? <laughs> in English, it's Yagatovand. It is a relationship where there is no commitment. There is no commitment before God. There is no commitment before the law. You didn't go to home affairs. You didn't go to the church. But you want all the benefits that a married man must have or a married woman must, must have. You want all the benefits. Amen? We are lucky in South Africa because you are protected. In a common law marriage, you are protected somehow. But in some country, you get nothing. <laughs> no protection, no maintenance, nothing. Hallelujah. So we have some Christians, they are common law wives. They are common law Christians. They are not married to Christ. They are not the bride of Christ. They just come to church and they call themselves, I'm a church goer. We don't want church goers here. We want Christians, committed Christians. We want people that said, I have made Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. Not only Savior. Some people, they want Jesus in their lives only as the Savior. When you are sick, you want to be healed. When demons are attacking you, you want him to defend you. When witches are playing in your house, you want him to protect you. But as far as commitment is concerned, we, we are not committed. We never take a, an engagement that I give you my life. We have never done that. There are two relationships. There are two decisions in your life. That are very important. These two decisions are the most important decisions in your life. It is not where you are going to stay. It is not which neighborhood you are going to stay in. It is not what kind of studies are you going to do. Because some matriculants are very confused when they are in matric. Should I do accounting or engineering? Eesh, headache. They think this is the decision of your life. No. The decision of your life is to give your life to Christ. That is the number one biggest decision of your life. Because this decision will affect the rest of your life all the way to eternity. If you are here, you have never taken that decision to give your life to Christ. To be committed to Christ. To walk with Christ hand in hand till the rest of your life. Till the end of your days on earth and into eternity. I invite you to do it tonight. To give your life to Jesus as and accept him in your life as your Lord. First, your Lord and then your Savior. Your Lord means Adonai. Lord means, Adonai means master. Hallelujah. It means there is nothing that you can do if he doesn't give the order. That's what Adonai means. When you carry on with that verse I gave of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1, you go to verse 3, 
you will see that you must follow the example of Sarah who was calling her husband, my Lord, my master. I'm going to dance to your tune. If you don't speak a word, I'm not going to move. This is how we should be with Christ. He must be our master. He must rule our lives, every aspect of your life. Only when you do that, then you can enjoy the benefits of the bride. Protection. Hallelujah. Healing. Hallelujah. The children's bread. Hallelujah. He will be fighting your enemies only when you are the bride. No one is going to play with you. No, no one is going to touch you. And I gave the example that dad likes to give us of this man who invited Jesus in his, in his, in his house. He had a three-story house. He, Jesus, be my guests. And then he gave Jesus one floor, the top floor, the third floor. So Jesus, this is the floor that I'm going to give you. The entire floor is yours. The first night, some robbers thought they came and they beat him up, that gentleman, and they stole everything on the ground floor, first floor and second floor. In the morning, he woke up and he's like, Jesus, you were in my house. But we were broken into, where were you? Jesus said, hey, I was on the third floor. And the third floor is untouched. The floor that you gave me, everything is intact. Look at me how well I slept. There was peace on the third floor. I did not even hear the noise happening on the second floor. The gentleman says, okay, we are going to do half half, 50-50. I give you the third floor and the second floor. I will stay with the first floor and the ground floor. Jesus says, no problem. Beloved, the Bible says Jesus, he stands at the door and he what? He knocks. Jesus is a gentleman. Jesus will never break into your door. He will never break into your life. He will never break into your house. He knocks. And the Bible says, those who open, if you open, he will come in. If you don't open, he will go. Jesus is a gentleman. The one who breaks the door, it is the devil, not Jesus. He stands at the door and he knocks. If you open, he will come in. He will have supper with you and you will have supper with him. Amen. So second night, they robbed everything in the first and uh, grand floor. Same story in the morning. He complained, Jesus, how come you are in my house? We're doing 50-50. But you didn't protect me when I was attacked at night. Jesus says, hey, the two top floors, they are intact. Everything is okay. The gentleman said, okay, three floors. Now you have the majority. Some people, they have given three floors to Jesus. Three floors of their lives to Jesus. The majority of areas in their lives they gave to Jesus. But some areas, it is their, their preserve. Jesus, I give you my life. I'm going to obey all your commandments. But when it comes to money, please don't touch my money. Amen? The devil is going to play with your money. Amen. Because Jesus is not watching over that area. And the night that he gave Jesus the entire house, including the ground floor, nothing happened. No robbers came. The guy slept throughout the night. When he woke up in the morning, he checked if there was, Jesus says, relax, I was in charge. I was looking after your house. Everything is intact. Beloved in the Lord, if you want to be a bride of Christ, you must give your entire life to Jesus. Look at bride and groom when they're exchanging vows on their wedding days. The vows that they make are powerful vows. For better and for worse. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Beloved, it is a commitment. If there is no commitment, you are not going to enjoy the benefits. Invite Christ in your life. Let him be the Lord and Savior of your life. Every area of your life is going to be protected. Amen. Every area of your life is going to be blessed, watched over, and the devil is not going to touch anything. Assess your relationship with Christ today. What kind of relationship do you have with Christ? A relationship where you want blessings, you want travels, you want promotion, you want provision, you want things. But as far as commitment is concerned, there is no commitment. Assess your relationship. The devil is going to play in the other areas where Jesus is absent. 
I'm speaking about the bride of Christ. You. Examine how Christ loved you and how he gave his love for you and how he loves you when you were unlovable and undeserving of his love. He gave you his love and he gave up his life for you. The cross was meant for me. The cross was meant for you because we were criminals. But Jesus took your place and he took my place because he loved us. Just because of that, what can we give to Jesus? After the service yesterday, as I was driving home with Sister Lucy, she's like, you know what? When I think of how Jesus loves me, I don't know how, what I can do to him. Amen. And a husband who loves his wife like that, you don't know. How I, what, what is she going to give in return? This is how you have some wives, they're massaging their husband for nothing. Uh, you're just coming home, baby. Let me massage you. Because, because you love. She's like, what can I do for this man? <laughs> you're eating your pup and she's massaging your head. After you're finishing eating your pup, she's massaging your feet. Baby, your, your, your bathroom is, is, you know, your bath is ready. Bubble bath. Your birthday present that you didn't ask for. Beloved, because of the love. You have, she's easily and you know, entirely submitted. Christ also, because of the way he loved you, what can you do for him? The least you can do for him is to be submitted to him. It is to obey his command. It is to love him in return. It is the least that we can do for him. Let the love of Christ for you encourage your submission. As we read in Romans chapter 5 verse 8, Look at how God loved us. But while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not when we stopped sinning. No, we were still sinners. The least I can do is to be submitted. He deserves it. He is worthy of my submission. And number three, beloved in the Lord, the Holy Spirit will enable your submission. Because the word of God, it's not easy eh, to obey everything. Certain things are very difficult to obey. There are some people, they, they obey God as far as sexual immorality is concerned. Ah, they obey. Like, mm, I don't want to sin in that. But when it comes to lying, ah, they're number one liars. Amen? When it comes to gossip, ah, you are not going to be spared. <laughs> we were taught last week by Pastor John that liars, their place is where? In the lake of fire. Liars. We take lie. Some people are lying like they have a lie for everything. To come out of certain situation, to give excuses. Nous banalisons hein? certain mensonge. Nous banalisons certain péché. You think that uh, sexual immorality, yeah, that one is a big sin. Beloved, even lying is a big sin. The, we read here, liars, they belong in the lake of fire. They belong in hell. So some people, they can be okay as far as sexual immorality is con concerned, fornication is concerned, but lying, hey, they are struggling with lying. They don't even think about lying or before lying. It is automatic. Tick tac. <laughs> there was a time when I was manager and I had a team of 25 people working under me. The excuses, the needs they were giving me for being absent to work or being late for work. Ah. A lady told me that her mother died, and then another day, oh, I'm not going to come to work. My mother died. Oh, my condolence. Another day, she forgot that she told me that her mother died. She told me again, my mother died. I'm like, ah, oh, I thought your mother is already dead. I was like, no, no, this is another mother. I'm like, come on. How many mothers do you have? Some people, they have lies sur mesure, ready to wear. Other people, they are okay. They don't lie. They don't gossip. But they pro and they say they love. They love everyone. And they're kind. They're always gentle, always smiling, very courteous, hospitable. Amen? But they have something that they, they are lacking in their lives. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. God says, You are robbing me in tithes and in offerings. In tithes and in offerings. They never pay their tithes, they never give their offerings. They are struggling there. That is an area where you are struggling. 
That is an area where you are not submitted to the word of God. You are not submitted to God. You need help in that department. This year we are speaking about sanctification. It means every of area of your life must be sanctified, including your finances. Now, if you have an area of your life where you are struggling with a specific sin, beloved, ask for the Holy Spirit to enable you. The Bible says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The flesh will always be weak, but your spirit will always be willing. So do in terms that the Holy Spirit will enable your spirit to be strong so you can do certain things and run away from what you must run away from. The Bible says it is not by might. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by the spirit of the Lord. That you are going to achieve certain things in your life. So every area of your life where you are struggling with a specific sin or fault or shortcoming. Ask the Holy Spirit to enable you to be submitted to God in that area. Lord, I, I lie too much. Please help me to stop lying. Lord, I've been struggling with fornication. Please help me to stop. Beloved, the Holy Spirit will help you. And before the end of this year, all of us are going to have a testimony. I say that I'm waiting for the testimony of a brother here who will say, there was one thing that I've been struggling with my entire Christian life. But this year, in the year of sanctification, I stopped it. The Holy Spirit helped me. I'm waiting for that testimony. I'm waiting for a testimony from a sister who will say, since I gave my life to Jesus, I've been okay. But there is this one area I was struggling, but the Lord helped me. This year, I stopped. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. It is possible. You will testify in Jesus' mighty name. Beloved in the Lord, we have benefits to submission. There are benefits when we are obeying God. The first benefit I want to speak about is James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee away from you. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submission will keep the devil away from your life. Submission will keep the devil away from your children. Submission to God will keep the devil away from your work, away from your business. Submission to God will keep the devil away from your house. Sometimes it is the only thing that is lacking. We are not submitted to God. The devil is having a party with our lives. Sickness, theft, loss. The problem is submission. But sometimes when there is submission, beloved in the Lord, there are prayers. You will not even need to pray. Because God is just observing how you are submitted to him. He's going to deal with the devil that is attacking you. Sometimes you will not need to pray long prayers. Oh, devil, I cast you, oh, I bind you. No, the Lord is saying, this daughter of mine, the way she, she submitted to me, the way she reveres me, the way she respects and honors my word, no one is going to touch her. The devil is not going to touch her family. The devil is not going to touch her house. The devil is not going to touch her job. God himself will fight your battles when you are submitted to him. The same way a husband, when he has a submitted, a submitted wife in the house. Beloved, if even your sister-in-laws are attacking, he himself is going to fight for you. Because in some families, some women, they are suffering. The sisters-in-law, they are giving them a hard time. But when the husband knows that this woman, her heart is completely devoted to me, he will defend you in his family. He himself is going to fight those who are fighting you. But if you are always struggling, bras de fer avec le mari tous les jours, I'm wrestling with your husband in the house. You want to wear the pants. Mon affaire ma pantalon a bon When his sisters will fight you, he will say, ah, I'm going to wear He's not going to intervene. He will be like, you know what? <laughs> Bobo man. When you start fighting, he takes a walk. He goes. But when he knows that you are submitted to him, when he knows your heart is completely devoted to him, even his sisters, when they start fighting you, he himself is going to come. Don't touch my wife. You don't know where this woman, where we come, when we come from with this woman. Don't play with her. Submission. God is going to deal with the devil. The Bible says, submit to God. 
Some people, they are fighting the devil. They are resisting the devil without submitting to God. That's why the devil is not going. Submit to God. And when you resist the devil, God is going to kick him out. Another benefit I cannot. There are so many benefits of submission. Another benefit is Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2. I said here that people misunderstand submission. That's why submission is so attacked in the world today. Because we don't understand what submission is. Because we don't know the power of submission. The women who know the power. Those women who are treated as fool. Oh, Bumbaf. You say you do everything your husband is telling you to do. Those women, they know the power. They know the secret of submission. Submission is a power. It is not a weakness. And your submission to God is a power. Hallelujah. Look at what submission will do for you. Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 2. For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit. And who trembles at my word. The one who trembles at my command. And who is humble in spirit. That is what poor and contrite of spirit means. To, to be humble in the spirit. And to tremble at my command and at my word. This one, I will have my eyes on him. This one, I will have my eyes on her. When you tremble at the word of God. When you tremble at the commandment of God. You don't despise when the word is given, beloved, the Lord will only have eyes for you. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro in all the earth to sustain those whose hearts are loyal to him. Another verse, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The eyes of the Lord will be on you to help you, to save you, to rescue you, to restore you, to heal you, to elevate you, to promote you. When you are submitted to him, the eyes of the Lord will only be on you. He will have eyes for nobody else. Amen. A woman who is submitted to her husband, the husband only has eyes for her. You can come and criticize her. Oh, she's like this and she's like that. He only has eyes for her because he knows. This one, she is totally devoted to me. Amen. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears attentive to their prayers. This year, I pray that the eyes of the Lord will be on you. That the eyes of the Lord will never leave you even for a second. That the eyes of the Lord will be upon you when... Thieves are coming to attack your home. When thieves are attacking your house. When torches are attacking you in the street. The eyes of the Lord will not leave you in the name of Jesus. This year, someone will testify. The Lord saw me when I was crying out to him. The Lord heard me when I prayed out to him. The eyes of the Lord were with me this entire year. This year, 2024, the eyes of the Lord will not leave your house. They will not leave your family. They will not leave your house. They will not leave your work. They will not leave your health. They will not leave your business. The eyes of the Lord will not leave your studies. The eyes of the Lord will be with you everywhere you go. And in everything you do, the eyes of the Lord will be upon you. The Bible says, this one who trembles up at my word, my eyes are on him. The eyes of the Lord will be on you. Because you are trembling at his word. Because you are saying, this is my of sanctification. The Lord's eyes will be upon you to restore you, to save you, to deliver you from those who are threatening you, to justify you from those who are speaking against you, from your accusers and those who are attacking you. The Lord will give you victory. His eyes will be on your eyes from the beginning of this year to the end of 2024 and you will testify in Jesus' mighty name. The eyes of the Lord will be on you, on your family, on your children. They will not be attacked. You will not lose anyone. They will be saved because the eyes of the Lord will be on you. His ears will be attentive to your prayers. Before you call, he will answer you. Because you tremble at his word. Pray, Lord Almighty, that this year your children will tremble at your word. In every area, in everything. 
that when you speak, will say, yes, Lord, your wish is my command. And the third benefit is in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to verse 27. I'm going to stop here so we can pray. Hmm. Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Whoever obeys my commands, I compare him to a wise man who builds on the rock. Those who are submitted to my word, they are wise because they build on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, those who are rebellious, those who are not submitted, the rebellious bride, they will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to remember one thing. Listen to this. When the rain comes and when the flood comes, it doesn't choose the house where it beats. When the flood comes, it beats all the houses. Those who are built on the rock and those who are built on the sand. The flood will not come like, okay, I'm only going to attack the houses which are built on the sand. No. The flood, it attacks every house. Whether you are built on the rock, whether you are built on the sand, the flood will attack you. Don't cry, Lord, why am I attacked? I'm praying you. I'm serving you. Look at all these battles. I got to say, come back in me, pursue. Beloved, the flood will beat the houses that are built on the rock. That is you. And it also beat against the houses which are built on the sand. The flood is not selective. It beats every house. But the difference will be seen after the flood. In Jesus' name, I declare that you will remain standing. When the flood comes to beat your wife, to beat your children, to beat your business, when the flood comes to destabilize you in your health, you will remain standing in Jesus' name. You will not fall because you are built on the rock. In Jesus' mighty name, this year you will testify that yes, there was a storm in my life. Yes, there was a flood that beat against my family. Yes, there was a flood that beat against my job. But I am standing. You will remain standing because you are built on the rock. In Jesus' mighty name, beloved in the Lord, submission will keep you standing even after the flood. I pray that everyone will experience God's saving power in his life in Jesus' mighty name. Even after the great test of floods. I don't know what floods are coming this year, but you will remain standing. You will not fall in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to stand up and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Give a hand to Jesus. We have a few minutes left. I want us to pray. Beloved, I want you to repent and say, Lord, every area in my life where I lack submission, there are areas of my life where I do not submit. I pray that you will forgive me my lack of submission in Jesus' mighty name. Whenever I failed to obey a command, whenever I failed to put your word in practice, it was an act of rebellion. Forgive my rebellion in Jesus' mighty name. Pray, pray, pray. Ask for forgiveness for every time that you fail to submit. Ask for forgiveness for every time where you failed to be the perfect bride. When you walked in rebellion to the word of God, ask for forgiveness in Jesus' mighty name. Father, come and forgive us. Forgive me. Forgive faith and victory for every time where we did not execute your word and your command in our lives. For every time where we walked away from you. For every time where we walked in rebellion. From, for every time we contradicted your word. For every time we were influenced by the world. For every time where we allowed social media to be the final authority in our life. For every time where we allowed the world to have the last say in our lives. Father, forgive us our lack of submission. Forgive us our rebellion in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want us to ask for forgiveness for another thing. Please sit down. I'll go through this quickly. You know, there are some sins in our lives which are easy to identify. I mentioned some of them. Sexual immorality, lying, stealing. You know, it, it is so easy to identify these sins. Because the, the verses that speak about these sins are very, very clear. They are in the Ten Commandments. You know that mm -mm, I have sinned. 
very easy to identify. And even if you don't know the verse, your conscience will speak to you that you did wrong here. But there are some other sins that are not easy to identify. There are some other sins which are hidden. And it's so hard for you to spot them. To acknowledge that I'm struggling in this area. It's so hard for you to identify and to admit that I am wrong in this area. You cannot see them. You cannot identify them. They affect your thoughts. They affect your motives. They affect your feelings. They affect your desires. These are the sins we call the sins of iniquity. These are the things we call iniquities. Sins which you cannot see, you cannot point easily. That even some verses are hard to identify that this is a sin. I see today everyone is saying, uh, show me where it is written in the Bible. Sometimes we speak against certain things. We say, no, this is not right. Show me where it is written in the Bible. Iniquity. These are very subtle. They hide under things such as pride. No one can admit that, uh, uh, I know I'm a good man, but I, I am proud. Have you ever seen someone admitting that he's proud? No one admits that they are proud. They will say, no, it is self-confidence. <laughs> self-confidence. You don't know where you cross the line between pride and self-confidence. The line has been blurred. Una landia must be self-confidence. You are proud. You are arrogant. These things, we don't like to admit that we have these things. Sins such as rebellion, unbelief, the word of God is preached. But you say, okay, my interpretation of this verse is a bit different to what the pastor said. Beloved, it is unbelief. It is rebellion. The word of God is clear. What interpretation? Envy. If you are suffering from this, envy. And no one admits that I'm struggling there. You find it so hard to celebrate your sister's win. You find it so hard to celebrate your brother's win. Your brother is getting married. Your sister is getting married. My friend, even if you are single, celebrate. Because the basket is still going around. Your turn is coming. Your sister gets married. You are upset. You can't sleep. No, why is she getting married before me? No, celebrate. We don't admit these things. We just allow them to continue in our lives. Selfishness. Very few people admit they're selfish. They're like, no, I'm saving. What's saving? The Bible says, he who saves to the extreme, what is he doing? He's impoverishing himself. There is saving. Saving is good, yes. But don't be selfish. As a child of God, we need to share. We need to give. These things, they are also iniquities. Excessive ambitions. Some people, they are so ambitious to a point where they can even kill someone. Because of an excessive ambition. These are the people at work there. They are poisoning others. They can fabricate a lie so someone can be fired. And covetousness. Someone has something you also want the same. You are sleepless. Your throat, you can't swallow saliva. Because your brother bought a car and he's parking it there in the garage, in the, in the parking lot. You can't even face him. My brother, congratulations. No. Say, Lord, I want the same one. See, not an evil me. Beloved, these things... It is called iniquity. And it is these things that will lead to murder. It is these things that will lead you to the easily identifiable sins. It is these things that will lead you to lying. It is these things that will lead you to gossip. It is these things that will lead you to stealing. Now, how do you identify these things? We are going to repent from these things. I want us to read... Uh, some quickly, we are going to finish now. Psalm chapter 139. I want us to be submitted to God in everything. Whether it is a clear sin that is identified by the Bible or a hard sin to identify. Psalm chapter 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know 
my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We are going to pray for the Lord to search us. That if there is anything that displeases him, he will reveal it. Because sometimes by ourselves, we will not know, we will not spot things that envy, things like, like pride. It's so tough for some people to admit. But they will lead you to murder. They will lead you to lying. They will lead you to stealing. Say, Lord, search me if there is anything that doesn't please you. This is the era of sanctification. We must not be found in anything in our lives that displeases God. Can we stand up and pray, Lord, search me. That's all we're going to pray. Lord, search me. Beloved in the Lord, the Lord is going to search you. Le Seigneur va te sonder. This prayer that you are making is a dangerous prayer. If you don't want the Lord to search you, please sit down. Because the Lord is going to search you and he will show you that here you are doing wrong. There, I don't want this in your life. But beloved in the Lord, because it is the year of sanctification, we don't want these things in our lives. Lord, search me. Expose everything that is wicked in me and remove it from my heart. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Seigneur, son de nous, papa. Father, search us. Search me, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Remove everything that is wicked. If there is any wickedness in me, remove. If there is anger, remove. If there is pride, remove. If there is arrogance, remove. If there is envy, remove. If there is selfishness, remove. If there is excessive ambition, remove. If there is covetousness, remove. Anything that does not give you glory, remove. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, forgive me for my iniquities and anything that is hidden inside my heart, anything that I cannot identify with my own knowledge, with my own uh, wisdom. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will search me. Search me, O oh Lord. Search faith and victory. Que le péché caché soit exposé, soit enlevé. Au nom de Jésus, Papa, donne gloire à ton nom. Donne gloire à ton nom. Papa, nous ne voulons pas de péchés cachés. Nous ne voulons pas de péchés déguisés. Nous ne voulons pas de péchés camouflés. Search us. Search us. Remove covetousness. Remove envy. Remove pride. Remove arrogance. Remove anger. Remove hatred. Remove selfishness. Remove unbelief. In Jesus' mighty name, anything that does not give you glory in my life, Remove in the name of Jesus. Alef Christ la paix. Alef Dieu des armées. Parle-nous ce soir. Parle à mon frère cette nuit. Parle à ma soeur cette nuit. S'il y a quelque chose, papa, qui ne te plaît pas dans sa vie, dans ma vie, montre-nous Dieu des armées et enlève-nous. Guide-nous sur le chemin de la vie éternelle. Dans le nom de Jésus. Merci, Prince de la paix. Que la gloire soit rendue. Beloved, I want you to pray. Last prayer and say, Holy Spirit, help me in areas where I'm still struggling with certain areas of submission. Holy Spirit, I need your help. Enable me to be submitted to your word in everything. Prions, prions, prions. Holy Spirit, come and help us to be submitted in areas where we are struggling with obedience, where we are struggling with submission. Come and help us, Holy Spirit. We want to be fully submitted to you as the perfect bride. We want to be fully submitted to you. Come and help us, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Saint Esprit, viens nous aider. Viens nous aider à marcher dans la soumission. Viens nous aider à marcher dans l'obéissance. Viens nous aider à marcher dans la révérence à ta parole. Dans le nom puissant de Jésus. Saint Esprit, viens nous aider à être mon Père et mon Roi, l'épouse parfaite de Christ au nom de Jésus. Au nom de Jésus, qui est soumise en toutes choses qui est soumise en toutes choses, parce que Christ est le chef de l'Église. Papa, tu es notre chef. Quand tu dis un mot, nous sommes soumis. Quand tu dis un commandement, nous sommes soumis. Viens, Saint-Esprit, viens nous aider. Aide mon frère, aide ma soeur, aide pour la victoire, aide-moi à être soumis à ta parole en toutes choses, dans le nom puissant de Jésus. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you because our lives will never be the same again. With every word that is coming and speaking about submission, Father, we pray that we will be truly submitted in our lives in everything. Father, we want to be the perfect bride of Christ, who is submitted to Christ in everything, in areas of holiness, of avoiding sin, of hospitality, of giving, of finances, of meditating your word, of being always in prayer, of always being happy and joyful. Father, we pray that this year, the Holy Spirit will help us to be submitted to Christ 
in everything. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgivings and we say amen and amen. God bless you.